Hello everyone. So I'm on the 4.6 V8 Ford Mustang, 2009 model, so fifth generation. And I'm going to do a modification of the exhaust system. What I'm going to do is install an ele electric cutout valve, exhaust cutout valve, which means at a certain point on the exhaust line, I'm going to make the exhaust gases come out earlier and that to make more noise a better noise of that V8 so the good thing about this there's a small motor there's a remote control so you can activate it open them or close them from inside the car and the very very interesting thing about this is that you don't need to modify the whole exhaust line and you won't have full-time loud exhaust or a uh, maybe two silenced one like this one so the owner of this car asked me to install a couple of these to have a better better sound whenever he wants so that's i think probably the best of both worlds you have the original exhaust line system which is already pretty pretty noisy we're gonna say especially in europe here in france uh, but if he really wants to make it scream, he can open them and they will come out and the gas will come out early and make more noise. So I'm going to install them here. Here's the HOI pipe. Um, I'm going to put them here because this is where I have the most space. The little electric motor will go on the side over here. And uh, I think it's the place, the highest place on the exhaust line. Over there it's going to be a bit lower, so I prefer to put, it, put them here and avoid uh, eventually them getting hit by stones or anything, any obstacles that could be on the road. So before I cut these two pipes, I'm going to have to put something over here to hold up the rear end of the exhaust, because as soon as it's going to be cut, there's nothing holding it between the mufflers and the catalytic converters. So. I'm going to also have to hold it here and there and then just measure exactly the size of uh, the cutout system before uh, I will cut this pipe and then fit the, the system with uh, the correct fittings. Alright so I put support under my exhaust line before and after the cutouts and uh, I just took the piece aligned it like that and drew a couple of marks and then used uh, the cardboard of a tape to draw straight lines like that on the pipe. So both sides are set and now I'm going to proceed to the cutting with this type of saw and of course a spe specific blade for metal. for the first one. Now, three to go. So to connect this to the exhaust, I made a few junctions like this with high temperature paint. And I'm going to hold everything in place with these really heavy duty screw ties. Alright, so I put this back together and uh, I turned it, it's not all tightened, I turned it all the way like that so that the motor will not be too low, too close to the road. That's 
probably the best I can do. So if I line up like that with the exhaust, it should be pretty good. It's not too exposed, but uh, I can't really do anything else. It is a universal kit, so can't do miracles. So just make sure if you're gonna buy one of these that you have enough room under your car to to place it correctly so that it won't uh, scrape on the ground or get somewhere in the way of something. So now I have to assemble this to this with all these different parts and, and then I'll get to the other side. Just a little advice, while you're assembling all that, keep these uh, loose so that you can bring this down and you'll have much better access to tighten on everything and put the exhaust tip on and then just pivot it back as it should be and then tighten all them up. Alright so now they're installed. Got both my exhaust tips here and there. Uh, little advice I can give you is use some uh, um, heat shield uh, sort of tape, it's not sticky but it's used to um, insulate the exhaust pipes or exhaust manifolds so I used one strip under my uh, junctions so that they are nice and uh, airtight so no gases come out there is a little bit of condensation that comes out but that's not a problem. The problem would be if there were gases coming out. So that's basically the only thing I had to check and then retighten all this and just make sure nothing comes out before the end of the mufflers and then you should be good for your MOT or whatever pollution tests. So now I still have to do the wiring and uh, since I don't really know how I'm going to go on about this, I better get to it. So now we're the next day, didn't have enough time to finish yesterday. So I managed to find a spot to make the wires go into the car. So that was not an easy task because you don't really know where to go. I tried through the engine bay, it wasn't easy. would have had to uh, unmount too many things to get through. So finally, I made a hole right up there and got it under the central console. So I think that's probably the best place I found well that's why I put it there uh, there's probably other ways to do it but I put it there because it's nice and high up not too much uh, exposure to water and in the car it will be very discreet I also put the wires in these uh, protect protections on both sides made it go behind the heat shield behind this uh, heat uh, insulated material and comes out up there and inside the car same thing on both sides so that wasn't too complicated and now I'm going to show you up there what it looks like so I had to get the center console off or at least sideways to get access to where I wanted to make that hole so here's where it is it was pretty complicated to find exactly where to pierce without of course damaging anything with it where it would not get in the way of something else and uh, I think this is really the highest part of the of the bottom of the car so probably the safest place uh, for many reasons water heat humidity it's going to be the best I'm going to put some something on the side of that as well to sort of insulate it a little bit more but it shouldn't be a big problem at all it shouldn't be a problem at all so I've got my two wires coming up from down there I cut them to connect them to only one remote control device I think it's much simpler if you have one device to control both valves you're not gonna have fun anyway opening one and closing one so they, they, I connected them both to use only one remote I think it's much simpler like that And then the wire goes behind here, up around there, and here's the receptor for the remote. And the 
lighter plug. So I think that's probably the cleanest and simplest way to do. I'm going to attach all these wires nice and clean on the side. So the owner won't see anything apart from this if he wants to disconnect it for some reason or another. And uh, yeah, I'm almost done. We're going to be able to hear how it sounds. I already tested. They both work at the same time perfectly. So now this is stuck on the side. The wires are nicely tucked underneath. And before I close all this up, I'm going to start her up and see how it goes. That's definitely worth it. The noise is as it should be when uh, with a stock exhaust when it's closed, and as soon as you open them, all hell breaks loose. So that's pretty cool. So all I have to do now is close her up, and then take her for a spin and see how it goes on the road. All right, let's go for a little test. Now the valves are closed. And uh, in a few minutes, in a few seconds, I'll open them and you'll see what it gives.